Dipti is here as well with the international um, press. You're starting with Israel, aren't you, um, Dipti? Uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's new coalition, the most right-wing government Israel has ever seen, perhaps? That's right. That coalition that was announced yesterday uh, includes Avigdor Lieberman, notably the new Israeli defense minister. Stuart, he's a man known for his hardline views, especially on Israeli Arabs. Uh, but he was also a former arch enemy of Benjamin Netanyahu. They've known each other for about 30 years, but it seems that all disputes have been put aside, at least for politics sake now. You found a piece in the Jerusalem Post, uh, haven't you? Rather an acerbic piece uh, about the press conference yesterday. It's called Pivoting to Peace, question mark. Uh, that's really um, interesting. The writer is written by uh, Gil Hoffman, who basically describes the press conference that announced the appointment of uh, Lieberman yesterday in rather humorous detail. It's an analysis piece, and he says... Basically, it was awkward from beginning to the end. Uh, Netanyahu, first of all, broke tradition by speaking English during the press conference, which is something he usually does at the end. Uh, and then Lieberman also spoke in English, and then Netanyahu complimented him on how well he'd progressed in English. Uh, it was a weird scene for the Jerusalem Post uh, in which the two men looked like, I quote, a divorced couple trying desperately to be nice to each other in front of the kids. <laughs> it's been a lot of criticism, of course, hasn't there? And fears, really, Israel's defense uh, policy it's moving in a much more belligerent manner after this appointment. It's, uh, that's, that's absolutely right. In fact, Thomas Friedman, uh, a former, uh, who was a former Jerusalem uh, bureau chief for the New York, New York Times, has penned a piece in the New York Times saying it's Israel's dark hour. Uh, he says Netanyahu has gone from bad to worse uh, by forcing out Moshe Yalin, uh, who was a previous defense minister and, quote, a decent man, a soldier's soldier. In his place, Lieberman is unfit to be a military analyst. His only experience with, ba uh, with battle was, quote, dodging a tennis ball. Friedman also criticized Lieberman for his belligerence. For example, he praised an Israeli soldier who shot dead a Palestinian attacker. Now, you found an opinion piece in Haaretz that says whatever happens, Israel is going to be involved in a war. Unlike the New York Times, screenwriter Kobe Nib, who wrote this piece in Haaretz, says it's rather pessimistic opinion piece. It starts off by saying, don't worry, it'll be okay. There will be a war. Um, Israel, for the writer, Israel will inevitably have a war because that's what happens every few years. That's how history has dictated past wars. And there's a real sense of resignation in this article that Israel is inevitably drawn to war and no matter who's running the government. And the only thing that could change, however, in the next war, should Israel have one, is that it might be bigger and more powerful, and that would be because of Lieberman. Now, a different story for you now. This is uh, Amnesty International uh, accusing Europe of being complicit with uh, Egypt's declining human rights record. It's an article from Al Quds, which is an Arab language newspaper out of London, um, and it was based on an Amnesty International report that came out yesterday, which revealed that 13 of the EU's 28 member states continued to provide weapons uh, to the Egyptian regime to help maintain security and order. This, despite the fact that they were meant to stop doing the, uh, doing this uh, three years ago, after it was discovered that security forces were perpetrating violent acts against protesters, according to Amnesty International this repression continues under the current regime of Abdel, Sisi al uh, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. And in fact, uh, the French newspaper La Croix actually goes even further, revealing that its own correspondent was held in custody by Egyptian authorities this week without any explanation why. Diptyka is going to talk about migrants uh, now. A lot of the papers actually talking about that uh, tragic capsizing of yet another migrant boat in the Mediterranean. We showed you those uh, dramatic pictures earlier in the programme. Those pictures have been splashed all over the international uh, papers, Stuart. Over 500 migrants trying to cross into Europe were rescued, uh, but at least five were killed. Uh, and th these pictures have, have been all over the press. They were released by the Italian Navy who came to the migrants' rescue. And uh, this, is a, this is the front page of The Guardian with the headlines scrambling for their lives. Sadly, it's the sort of all-too-familiar headlines, pictures that we were seeing. But this one in particular was also taken by uh, was also uh, published by the British tabloid The Sun that calls it horror in the med in the Mediterranean and and you, they've actually published these pictures la in in large size um, that show really how perilous the crossing is and how rickety these fishing boats are uh, I mean it, it is believed that a majority of them did survive because they were on the lower decks and finally, uh, a local branch of Pegida, this is the uh, German anti-Islam movement. They've been very, very uh, outspoken on the issue of migrants. They're embroiled in rather, uh, a rather embarrassing mix-up, if you like, uh, with Kinder Chocolate. 
It's a mad story. It really is. is <laughs> it's only one word you can describe. It's a mad story. You can read about it in the Telegraph. Basically, a local branch of Pegida, the German anti-Islam movement, mm. have lashed out at Kinder uh, on Facebook over a new Kinder chocolate campaign that's basically replaced the traditional blonde hair, blue eyed kids with pictures of more ethnic looking kids. Mm -hmm. Now, the Pegida branch said it was not normal and they asked if it was a joke in a post on Facebook. As it turns out, these cherubic uh, young faces that you see are actually childhood photos of players from the German national team, the Mannschaft. Uh, it turns out it was not a joke, but a marketing campaign ahead of the Euro next month. Okay. Some might say serves you right, Pegida. I couldn't possibly comment. Thank you very much, Tim Tika Laurel of France 24.